And and next thing you know, I'm drinking a cup, a cup of water, and I'm like, I'm still not feeling good. I'm still not feeling good. Next thing you know, I cough. <clears throat> cough again. <clears throat> I'm cu cu coughing again. <clears throat> and I can't get the cough out. And I'm freaking out. Like, I can't breathe right now. So do you want to know what separates the have and the have nots? Those that are struggling like myself, making 20,000 a year to double the income of 50 to 100 to 250 to 500,000. And those that just think like a millionaire, those that just strategize like a millionaire, and those that actually become a millionaire. It's just one thing. It's this one thing that I've not only done myself, that not only my wife and I, my wife and I have actually experienced ourselves, but those that we observed also on their journey of path of entrepreneurship and financial freedom and independence, that they do this well too as well. You know what this is? Do you want to know what this is? Here it is. It's their ability to handle a crisis and process issues. Their ability to handle a crisis and process issues. Let me explain. A few weeks ago, I got appointed as the chief distribution officer of PHP and Z. We had a leadership meeting, and our current CEO, my current mentor, said, Matt, you are now the chief distribution officer. You're in charge of 16,000 licensed agents in terms of the growth. We've grown at a 40% rate the last 10 and a half years. Now you're in charge. <laughs> I was like, well, wow. Okay, so the following week, I'm in Dallas. I'm doing my job to en enroll in my I-9 and to enroll in my taxes and all that stuff, but also not only the administrative side of not having a job, but also the administrative role and also the leadership role of becoming a new chief distribution officer while maintaining and running our business. So I'm in Dallas week in, week out, week in, week out. I think I was in Dallas maybe uh, three weeks in a row. Next thing you know, I come into Dallas, I'm about to shoot another update video, I'm about to shoot another uh, video f to, to be released. And the next thing you know, I'm coming in, the, the, the receptionist, boom, she, she uh, uh, scans me, I'm 100 degrees. I said, are you sure? Yeah, you know, it was a time in Dallas where it was like the hottest a week in Dallas, like 110, 115 degrees, feels like 120, something like that. I said, I'm, I think I'm kind of hot. I don't feel necessarily feeling the weather. I kind of like felt a little, you know, woozy this morning, but nothing where I feel like I got a fever. She, she, she shoots me again with the, with the thermometer, 99 degrees. I said, you got to cool down. I cooled down a little bit, drank some water. The next thing you know, I'm 98. She goes, okay, you can go, but be careful. Okay, I kept my mask on. I'm inside the Valuetainment studio. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at the board. I'm not so, feeling so good. I keep my mask on, and they're greeting me. Hey, what's up, man? I'm fist bumping. I'm not shaking as I'm fist bumping. Sauce, what's going on, Sauce? Uh, 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 Adam Sosnick and uh, uh, Tegan Beckett. Fist bump, fist bump. I said, you know what? The receptionist said, I initially checked in at 100 degrees. I said, as a precaution, I think I would feel comfortable if I wanted to go get COVID-19 tested just in case, because I don't want to accidentally spread this to anybody. She says, t -Green says, no problem, go, go, get, go get checked out. I go in Dallas, and next thing you know, everywhere in Dallas, I don't compare to Illinois, you gotta get an appointment, you gotta get a doctor's letter before you get a COVID-19 test with a rapid test results. Dallas, they're every, every five minutes I'm finding COVID-19 test, uh, test centers. Every five miles, 10 miles, there's like four or five different places to get COVID-19 rapid test done in Texas. Okay, so I get tested. I'm waiting 15 minutes. I go to another place to get tested because I wanted to have two different results because I don't want these test results that these centers playing because I know you've been hearing some conspiracy theories out there. And next thing you know, she calls me back. Boom, you're, you're COVID positive. Next thing you know, the other center, you're COVID positive 19. So two different centers, two different tests. I'm COVID-19 positive. Holy moly. Right? I'm thinking to myself, what am I doing? What am I doing? Holy moly, I got this thing. I've heard these reports. Am I going to be on a ventilator? All these different things. So all these different scenarios are running through my brain. Okay? And so I go out and I drive. I'll grab something to eat real quick. I'm starting to feel the, 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 uh, the fever. I'm starting to feel the fever. Okay. All right. I'm not sure if this is me just triggering this and, and actually, and, and this actually evolving. And, and next thing you know, I'm drinking a cup, a cup of water and I'm like, I'm still not feeling good. I'm still not feeling good. Next thing you know, I cough. <clears throat> cough again. <clears throat> I'm ca ca coughing again. <clears throat> and I can't get the cough out. And I'm freaking out. Like, I can't breathe right now. And next, you know, should I, should I, should I go back into the ER? Anyway, I get into the car just to take a precaution. I get into the car. Let me go to the ER. I get head out the hotel. I'm going there. <clears throat> I can't cough. Now I really can't breathe. I'm freaking out. I call the ER center. This where I just got COVID tested. Hey, I'm coming in. I'm coming in hot. Next, you know, they're like, no problem. Next, you know, stoplights, traffic, all these different things to get me two exits away to the ER center. 
And I'm thinking to myself, I can't breathe right now. I can't listen, man. I'm hitting my hazard signs. Guys, I have to, Dallas, I got to apologize. I get on the sidewalk. I'm driving on the sidewalk in an SUV. I'm, I'm planning. It's a red light. I'm crossing with you know, all these different cars going back and forth. Listen, I can barely breathe. Yes, I admit it was bad for me to do this. But listen, I can barely breathe. I'm going to... I'm going to the ER center. And to make matters worse, you know what I found out too? My wife calls me back, says, babe, our son Jojo has COVID-19. He tested positive. And I'm freaking out. I'm mad. I'm upset. I'm upset. And I'm like, damn, what did I do to my family? What did it do to my kid that he's got to deal with this COVID-19? I'm more fearful of him than it was for me. Anyway, I make it there. I make it there. Boom. We have to do paperwork. Calm. What? Paperwork? I can barely breathe. Paperwork. ID. All these different things. Okay, I finally get in there. I remember calm. I just take calm. I just take calm. I'm reminded of a Marine Corps exercise about how to handle when we crash in a helicopter. And it was to grab hold, grab a reference point, because when a ca- helicopter hits, boom, and let's say you're in the ocean, boom, you got to de- deal with the initial shock, so you got to hold on, and then the helicopter is going to roll, probably flip upside down. So I remember just being in a position of grabbing a reference point physically and it's calming down, calming down. I finally get in there. They put an IV in me. They do all these tests, do all these scans. I drink something. I think they may have uh, put something into the IV. But an hour or two hours later, three hours later, I was fine. I go back home to my hotel. I have a nice six, seven, eight hours sleep. I don't, I don't remember last time I slept six, seven, eight hours. My back started to hurt. I remember getting up. Chugging some water. Didn't feel so good the next day. Slept it. Slept it off. Can't remember when the last time I took a nap in the middle of the afternoon, but that's what I did. Next thing you know, I'm feeling better. I'm waking up at, I'm waking up at 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. I remember going to bed at 8, 9 o'clock. Like, get on with the rest of your day. Listen, as an entrepreneur, I'm not used to having 6, 7, 8 hours of sleep. Next thing you know, my body's waking up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Get up for your day. Get up for your day. And I'm like, okay, let me go back to bed because I got I to gotta sleep this thing. I need to get some rest build up my immune system, and hopefully purge this thing out. Anyway, make a long story short, three days. It took me three days to kick COVID-19's ass. It took me three days to get over the system. It took me three days to get rid of this fever, this cough. And, and, and here's what I'm thinking about this whole COVID-19 case. A lot of times we face crises. And in this, uh, and in this instance, things that you worry that will kill you. And I'm still going through the numbers. At, at the recording of this video, 6.1 million people have positive 19 coronavirus. However, 187,000 deaths. Now, it's horrific to hear those deaths, but I'm looking at the data, I'm looking at the numbers. That's 3% of people that COVID, get COVID-19 die. And right now, based on that report, 6% of the 3% have COVID-19 listed as the only cause for them to die. So when I'm, when I'm thinking about this situation, I'm thinking about going through life. I'm going through crisis. Listen, I'm a single dad, and my wife was a single mom. We were fighting through, through financial situations and economic hardships before we discovered each other and before we got married. Before we got married, we had our own crises. We had our own issues. And sometimes when people say, you know what? You know, uh, something's difficult, something's hard, something's tough. Or in this case, something's life-threatening. They make a mountain of an emotion. They make a mountain out of a molehill. In other words, and they make a crisis more than what it really is. Have, have you read this book, Your Next Five Moves by Patrick and David? Let me, let me share with you some of the things he says on page 63 and how to deal with the crisis. Okay? Uh, he says here, acting like a victim is the opposite of being a grandmaster. At the same time, let's recognize that things do happen outside of your control. Like I remember telling my wife, babe, I'm so, I'm so sorry that... If I had coronavirus 19, I'm sorry that Jojo got it, our son got it. You know what she tells me? She says something very, you know, very encouraging to me. She says, babe, it wasn't your fault. Who knows if you were the one who gave it to him? Like, we don't know how we got coronavirus. I mean, could you go back and track how to get coronavirus, how to get coronavirus, how, how to get the flu? You don't know. And so it was very encouraging to me. So, hey, babe, you know, it's, it's not necessarily your fault. We don't know how we got it. It could have gotten through you. It could have gotten uh, something else. But uh, Patrick says here in his book, crises have different life, lifespans. Some last an hour. Now, this can last a quarter and even a year. In our case, with COVID-19, it lasted three days. I, I continue here. When a crisis does happen, the responsibility of a leader increases tenfold. When everyone is freaking out, it's incumbent upon you, the leader, to be calm in a storm. So the question for you, if you want to become a millionaire, that means you've led. I mean, if you won the lottery or you got rich quick or you got lucky and mailed a million, this doesn't apply to you. 
But if you're like me, that's building your business and building your life and building a life of financial freedom and independence from building a business from scratch, like myself and like many others watching this video and this many part of the Seven Figure Squad community, you gotta be a leader. You gotta lead. And it says here again, let me repeat, when everyone is freaking out, it is incumbent upon you, the leader, to be calm in the storm. Decisiveness, resiliency, and calmly processing issues are even more critical at this time. And let me continue here. What expands or decreases the lifespan of a crisis? Number one, your strategies. So if you had a strategy to overcome a crisis, that will decrease, or, or if you don't have a strategy, it will increase the lifespan of a crisis. Let me share number two. Your level of poise. Poise. Calmness. All right. We got this. Okay? Or are you freaking out? Ah! Are you freaking out? That sometimes adds more. Listen, I come from a Filipino family. A lot of my friends, African-American, Latino community, they, a lot of them freak out. A lot of them get loud. We got loud. We freak out. But that's either your poise or, a cri or, or through a crisis or you freaking out in a crisis will either increase, exaggerate, or reduce. So therefore you can quickly eliminate a crisis. Number three. Uh, which goes into number three, your exaggeration of crisis. Number four, you're downplaying your crisis. And number five, your ability to see five moves ahead. So listen, if you want to become a millionaire, you have to understand that your journey will have a lot of exits, will have a lot of, will have a lot of speed bumps, it'll have a lot of negative thinking, it'll have a lot of doubts, misbeliefs, concerns, personal attacks, attacks on your character, attacks on your product, attacks on your service. But if you are striving to constantly improve, if you have your next three, four, five moves planned ahead and you're constantly developing and you're improving, that's the only thing you can really do through a crisis is develop and improve, not freak out. Because that will exaggerate the situation. But if you're in a situation right now and you're going through a crisis and you, you, you tell yourself this, hey, boom, what can you control? What can I control? Every time I've been through a crisis, been through a divorce, been through a bankruptcy, been through a family court, all these different things, uh, business issues. Every time we've been through a crisis, we stayed calm and we asked ourselves, what can we take responsibility of? How can we be calm through the storm? What can we control? And do I need to find people to help me out to delegate so therefore they can take care of these areas so therefore I, keep, I can keep the main thing the main thing and still drive my business, still continue on this path to financial freedom, financial benefits, or on this path to becoming a millionaire and I'm not distracted or I reduce time or eliminate time away from it. Otherwise, I got to deal with this thing called a start-stop. And one of the biggest ways where people get off their journey towards becoming a millionaire is what they call start-stop. They stop progress because they got to deal with the crisis and then start again. No, no, no. This is a constant thing. Once you got momentum, once you get your foot in the gas, you keep going. You have to understand and you have to anticipate that things want to come your way. That's why as you journey through this from a financial standpoint, you want to have a good accountant, you want to have a good attorney, you want to have a good advisory board, you want to have the right people in your ear coaching you and teaching you, and that's a calm storm. We've been through this. We've been through this. Or listen, this, this is the same values and principles. We've gone through other storms, other principles. You'll be all right. See, my wife told me, hey, babe, you're all right. It's not your fault. It's all right. We'll get through this thing. You get through this thing. I want to know what you're thinking. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know how you deal with the crisis. Because when you're going through a crisis, what has been my saving grace? What can I control? What do I, need to, what do I need to delegate so therefore I can still move forward? When you think about going through a crisis, hopefully you can watch this video and remind yourself that, listen, at the end of the day, you, listen, my faith kicks in, you and the God and the Lord that you decide to serve is going to get you through this crisis. Listen, tough times don't last. Tough people do. With that being said, drop your comments below. Love to know your thinking. Love to know your thoughts. I want to know your strategies. I want to know how you come through and overcome a crisis. Drop it in the comment section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you like our Facebook business page. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.